And I got a big puff of white smoke out of the pony motor exhaust pipe. Man, I'm pissed. Ah, I might have found our problem. The magneto wasn't spinning. We got all the parts figured out as far as what we're going to use for the most part. At this point, it would just be smart to just get in there, fix the problem that caused this to break, and then we'll be 100% confident that the pony motor is ready to rock and roll and won't have any issues moving forward. So, it snowed. Old Red's looking a little white. What do you think, guys? Huh? Well, let's peel back the cover and start pulling parts off. So a while back I put three gallons of straight coolant in the engine to be able to offset the water in the block so that it wasn't completely water and it didn't have any damage to the bottom of the diesel. Well, come to find out, ethylene glycol at 100%, it freezes at 8 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 13 Celsius. And so 100% coolant or antifreeze actually has a higher freezing temperature, meaning it freezes at a higher temperature than a 50-50 mix. So when you mix ethylene glycol with water at a 50-50 rate, you change obviously the chemical composition in a way in which it now freezes at negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 37 degrees Celsius. And so I'm adding three gallons of water. I actually got hot water because it's kind of cold out. We haven't had temperatures that were anywhere near eight degrees Fahrenheit. We have had temperatures in the teens and so I'm gonna basically add this. This is only half, so this machine takes 12 and a half gallons of coolant. This will basically make up a total of six gallons in the system. And I don't, I don't wanna fully fill it yet because I'm still working on a lot of the other systems and I don't want it all full of coolant. But I'm doing this so that we don't have any major problems down there in the engine block when it comes to getting ready to start the diesel or when it gets cold, we don't want any problems. So the other question people are going to ask is, is it going to mix? Well, probably, but what I'm going to do right now is we're going to go run the starter on the pony motor and it's engaged to the diesel and we'll just turn it over a few times and that'll get it kind of mixed up as best as possible and it'll be fine. Um, just for this, for now, now that I know that you need to actually have that 50-50 mix to truly lower the freezing temperature. Um, you know, that's why we added this. Definitely something that I didn't know. One of the commenters in the video, one of the videos uh, mentioned it, and I really appreciate that. So thank you for letting me know. I would have just left the coolant in there had I not known. So, so yeah, big thank you to you.
One thing many people may not know about a pony motor on these old cats is they share coolant with the main diesel engine. So this is the pony motor. There's a gap right between them. It's a small gasoline engine. And there's the big diesel. And so a lot of the older pony motors would, would share coolant right here behind this little housing there. This is a newer version of a pony motor because the 1956, 57, 58 is the last years that they actually used them on machines. And so this design, the coolant comes through this little elbow here. It comes from the diesel engine block over to here and then circulates down through the head across a passage underneath this top cover over to the other head. And so we are going to take this little elbow off here and just see if there's any blockages in there. Um, it's definitely worth looking and that will also has to come off to get this top cover off. So right now I've got everything unbolted. I pulled everything back off. So now we can access uh, the top cover and pull that off and see what we find. Well, it's not totally blocked up, so that's great. So, you can see, I mean, there's some buildup, but as you can see, there's a passage all the way through it. I mean, really, it doesn't look bad at all. Might need to replace this little rubber gasket here. Doesn't look terrible. And here you can see that that's not blocked. And the other big reason that the pony motor doesn't have any coolant in it right now is that I drained everything out. And so right now, you saw me put three more gallons of water in just recently. Now it has six gallons of coolant slash antifreeze. That's all it put in. This takes 12 and a half and I didn't want to have to deal with it getting all over everything as I'm basically working through the pony motor issues and so I didn't fully fill it. We'll fill it up with the rest of it when we get closer to actually starting the diesel back up and the pony motor but for now we're gonna leave it where it is. I did pull, I started to pull this thermostat plug out and coolant started to come out of there and so I closed that back up, so that means that we've got coolant in this range up to here, which is great because then it's not up to here. Actually, if I stick my screwdriver in there, you can see it. So it looks like, yeah, there's coolant right up to here-ish. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely awesome to see that's not plugged and that elbow's not plugged. We're still going to look inside the pony motor, make sure it's not all plugged up in there. It looks really, really clean in here. So, 
These are the valves for that side. There's the valves for that side. So here's the other thing. See that play? Back and forth. That's what I was concerned about. I wonder how much more it would be just to take the whole thing out of there. Might not be too much work. Got all the bolts out of the pony motor. And we're leaking coolant now. So that's actually a good thing. Got a tray down below to catch it. And we'll wipe up everything we miss. We got a leaker. Gonna have to leak out everything that's coming out, I guess. You look at that right there ladies and gentlemen there's one of our broken teeth found it So well, there's where the pony motor goes. I'm gonna clean this off and figure it out. Clean it up. So, because I didn't drain the coolant, coolant filled up this little area where the clutch housing is. And that's where you saw the oil and the coolant mixing right in here, because this area doesn't only have coolant. But when the coolant 
come came out of there and just overflowed this whole area. It filled up this passage and then just kind of, you know, drained all the water out of the, the clutch housing. So I drained the whole clutch housing, got that open now. We'll clean it out, we'll flush it out before we go putting it back together so we don't end up with any rust in here. But these gears right here are for the how you engage the flywheel to the diesel inside this clutch housing. Made a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Here's the plug for flywheel housing. And we'll pull this cap, this cover too. I've already made a new gasket for it underneath there, but we'll pull that and have a look. Bottom of this section where the pony motor goes definitely does not look bad at all. So that's great to see. Right here is where coolant comes from the bottom of the engine block and then it flows through the pony motor and then it returns back in this hole where that little 90 degree piece is that we took off. I'm pretty sure that it flows from the bottom, pumps up through the top and back out. I think I said the opposite when I pulled this off, but looking at the way this is set up, it's definitely gonna have the pressure coming from down here, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know that it comes from the top or the bottom, I'd love to know for sure. But I'm gonna either have to make or buy a new gasket for right here. There should be a piece that goes right here, over, and then there should be a piece over here that goes from there over to there. And so this gasket is gone, so. Which is fine. Don't hurt anything. For now, anyway. You can see how much room there is. That's the diesel engine. And there's like the foot well location where you're, when you sit, that's where your feet are. So this whole area is where the pony motor is at. Let's see. No pony motor. As I'm sure many of you are gonna tell me, this would be the perfect time to convert it to direct electric start. And I completely agree with you. I just don't know if I wanna spend the money to do that. And to be honest, if I do do that, I want to leave the pony motor as well. I heard that there's a way to retain and keep the pony motor as a functional piece of machinery in this tractor and also add a starter directly to the diesel engine. And I know you have to add glow plugs and you know, it has to be a 24 volt system instead of a, a six, but that's what increases the cost having to do all that and then you know I don't exactly know what starter to get so if you've done it if you've converted one of these over to direct electric start let me know and let me know what starter or what parts I'd need to get I'd really be interested in kind of trying to figure that out I don't intend on completely getting rid of the pony motor but I would like to have it as an option if the pony motor was to ever take a dive I don't think we're in a situation like that yet, but it's still something I'd like to consider. And here we have the pony motor and this is the crankcase and the whole engine block and right here is the top cover these are the heads once one here one here 
crankshaft right here and we'll give you a better look on how this thing works but first we're going to drain the oil Pretty cold outside right now, so it doesn't surprise me it's running slow. So for some reason this oil tube for changing the oil and draining the oil out of the pony motor doesn't drain very quick. And I thought, so we did find that one piece of this gear when we pulled the pony motor out. But we didn't find this piece or this piece. And so I'm wondering if the other piece is stuffed up in here because there's something in there. Well, that's not it. That's not part of that gear. That's a part of a castle nut. Hence it has those grooves. Huh. Well, now I wonder where we're missing one of these at. Anything else in there? See the brass rods all the way through. So I guess that this was stopping it up. I have to figure out if that's part of the pony motor, one of the inside somewhere. It's definitely been stripped out. So here's the bottom of the pony motor. Essentially, this is the gear that comes in contact with the starting pinion. This is where the coolant comes in to the pony motor block. You got one head here, one head here from the bottom. And then you got your crankshaft right there. So I'm just cleaning up this bottom gasket surface, trying to make sure that it's nice and clean so that when I get or make the new gasket for it, it's nice and ready to rock and roll. And this machine was definitely painted, and it was painted a different color yellow. And I'll show you that more here in a minute. There's the old gasket. Probably reusable.
It might help if I got them all. Check it out. The water jackets are wet now. Since I added enough coolant. So these are the three gears in the back of the pony motor. Essentially you have the camshaft gear, you have the crankshaft gear, and then you have the idler gear. When the crankshaft is turning, it's turning this gear and this gear. And then this camshaft gear basically turns the magneto, creating spark. And I think what happened was, I believe that this is a, a cast steel part, and this magneto gear is a cast iron part. Well, there is some pretty good play in and out on the actual center um, crankshaft gear. And so, because of that play, and there was some play in the flywheel, what I think happened was... The gear, essentially, because of this play, and there's some up and down play, not much, but just enough to bind up slightly and break that tooth off. And then what happened was when it broke the tooth off, it threw the timing out, and the timing in the magneto, essentially, it didn't fire properly, and the puff of white smoke was essentially a backfire, or a misfire. Um, and I, I'm no expert by any means on this, but that is my understanding of what probably happened. And so, the underlying cause... So the Magneto, we got that, right? It's all put together, you saw that video. The problem was not the Magneto, though. The Magneto was what actually happened after the issue. So... This play, in and out like that, is not good. And so, there's a bearing in this front cover here. And then there's a bearing right behind this gear that is pressed into the block. And I don't think that the front one is bad, but I think that the back one is. So, the plan, now that we're this far, I mean, shoot, why not? Well, they're going to take the crankshaft out. And we're going to try and figure out what we need to do to replace that bearing. And so, essentially the goal is to take up and to minimize as much of this slack as I can so there's no movement. And then when we put the flywheel on, we want it as tight as possible. And the other potential is that this keyway kind of got wallowed out and the key wasn't sitting straight. Because the flywheel wasn't sitting quite perfectly on there. I definitely never had to use a puller to get it off. And that was just the way I found it, and honestly, I didn't even know to check it, nor did I even mess with it until we had the issue. So, it's been a quick and fast education on pony motors and how they work, because, you know, when I showed up and first saw the machine, I didn't even know what a pony motor was. I seriously had never seen one, never used, been around them. So, I've been having a lot of fun enjoying figuring out what they are. Next up, so, so this gear, this lower one, this idler, it just comes right off. It doesn't have any set time, even though I did mark it, because I'd rather put things back exactly where they were. So I put, I put some black mark on that, and then on the two teeth that it goes in, for now. I don't think it matters, but when I'm taking things apart like this, and I don't quite know every step of every process, because I'm not trained in this, 
I do my best to put it back exactly as I could because this was running beautifully before that. And so once we fix this bearing issue, it's going to run beautifully again. Every single thing about this pony motor is in amazing shape. I mean, even this bearing, it's not that bad. But we're going to replace it and we're going to figure out how to get that so there's no play in that. Put the head gaskets back on, bolt everything back together, and the pony motor will be ready to rock and roll. So there's one of the bearings. It's essentially just an aluminum ring that is pressed in and this crankshaft rides on. All right, now we're gonna remove the valves from this cylinder. And so they're all labeled, if you see these dots, there's three dots here, four dots there, the other one has one and two, so there's one, two, three, and four. And I'm gonna keep them straight. So you pry the spring that way, you pull this little keeper out, and then the valve. Valve will push out. Like so. All right, with all that out of the way, we can pull the camshaft and the camshaft gear out. You can see in this section here, those grooves are oil grooves and they allow oil to get into this bearing surface so that it keeps it lubricated. All right, so this is the inside of the block. And as you can see, as you can see, that's the crankshaft. And these are the pistons. And so we need to take off the bottom side of the piston. And they should have, this one doesn't, but they should have a wire in them like that one does. So we're gonna have to get that wire out first. So this is that castle nut that we found in the bottom of the oil drain. At some point this motor's definitely been worked on 
And that castle nut must have broken off because there's not one missing in here. There's all four of them. There's, there's four total. There's the wire. See, there's a full castle knot right there. So these are the bearing surfaces for where the piston arm meets crankshaft. Got the last gear here on the crankshaft to get off. Got a puller set up. There's threaded holes in the gear that we're pushing against and I've got this puller pushing against a little spacer plate so that it's not pushing on the actual live center. Put this here to keep it from spinning. And we're gonna give it a shot. All right, that wasn't working. I couldn't hold it. So I'm gonna try and hold it like this and just use the impact. All right, bigger impact. Voila. So I had this spacer here because I didn't want to use this live center because there's threaded holes on either side and I didn't want to mess it up. So we're going to pull these woodruff keys out. Do that right now. There she goes. Our block. There's our crankshaft. So, definitely some wear on this journal. The inside journals for the pistons look really good. And this front journal actually looks really good. So, I may need to have this machined or machine this. But, We'll get the mics out and we'll check it and see where we're at. So right here, this aluminum piece here, this is what we're really after. This is what is wearing. And so this is the bearing. It's not a roller bearing like you would imagine. It's literally just an aluminum sleeve. And I think it's an aluminum alloy of some kind. There is an outer seal here. Looks like it's a national 5K 2595 is what's marked. Looks like it's just a normal lip oil lip seal. Finger, right here below my finger is a pin that retains that bearing and it is loose. So there's the pin. And this bearing is supposed to be a press fit. I know I saw it loose, so we're gonna try and tap it out. Yeah, there it goes. There's 
is our bearing. So there's definitely some wear on it and the fact that it came out that easy is not great. So I'm going to have to look for another one of these and if I can't find another one, I'm debating on making one out of bronze on the lathe. Do you guys think that's a good idea? I know this is an aluminum bearing, bushing, but I mean, wouldn't bronze be fine? I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. I think it'd be fine, but at the end of the day, if I can't find it, that's what I'm going with. All right, we have the pony motor about 98% disassembled. All I've got left, I've got to take out this oil seal here. There's an oil seal here. And then we got to take out this rear bearing in this cover. So this cover is what goes on this side of the pony motor right here. And that's the rear bearing is this aluminum sleeve that insert. And so it mounts up like that. I do have new top cover gaskets or gasket coming for it. I've got a new bottom cup, bottom gasket for it. New oil seal here. New oil seal here. So the plan is to make this. This is the bearing that essentially caused a lot of the issue. And it's supposed to be a press fit right here. So, if you see right there, right there there's a groove. And actually I just made another one pushing this in. And so there's a burr, I can feel it right here, right in that spot. And so I'm gonna file that down real quick. But the inside of this journal here where the bearing presses in is in incredible shape. I've already mic'd it and it is exactly 2.5 like it needs to be. Um, and I've measured it a couple times with a couple different things, but yeah, 2.2. Let's, let's measure it with this. Grab some calipers, mic it. I guess they're not calipers, they're mics. All right, so we are at 2.2. Two point two five, so two and a quarter. So the inside of this is exactly two and a quarter. And so this is two point two four eight, two point two five. 2.252, 2.4. So this is just slightly smaller than this journal here. Plan is I'm gonna make some new bearings, one here and then one here, because you wanna do them at the same time. And the other thing that this bearing, if you see it here, it's way too loose. You can just hear the play. And so I'm gonna have to debate on whether or not I have this, have somebody surface grind this down and get it all trued up, or I might try and do it myself. So both of these journals for the pistons are incredible. They're absolutely almost perfect. And so I'm not concerned about that. 
these are the four valves and the plan is I'm gonna take the valve the keepers out remove the springs and everything we're gonna take the valve itself and we're gonna lap all four valves and what that means is we basically take the valve and this surface right here we put some valve compound which is like it's like sandpaper paste essentially and You put that sandpaper paste right here around this surface. You put that valve in there without the spring mechanism. And then you just push against it and move it back and forth. And that basically cleans up that surface. So we're going to do that to all four of them. Even though we're still getting pretty good compression. Um, might as well do it. We've got it out. But the pistons themselves and the rings are in, in, in amazing shape. Not a single score on them. Um, you know, we're gonna clean this up a little bit. The wrist pins, I mean, no play at all. And so, they're real tight. The bearings, so these are the bearings for, that go inside of these piston connecting rods. Drop in like that, and then the other one, and then they squeeze around these here one here and one here and so like that and it, it grabs around and that's how as this crankshaft here spins these pistons go in and out like that oversimplified but so i've been trying to keep everything separate everything is going to go back exactly where it came from the lifters here are in great shape. We're just going to clean them up, put them right back in. So all of the gears are in amazing shape. And one thing to note is when you go to actually put the magneto back in, you line up the magneto's mark. It has an M mark in one of the valleys. You line it up with the M on this gear. And then that times it properly. This is the old gear, but you can see there's an M right there in the valley, and there's an M here on the tooth. And so when you go to put it up together, you line up, you line up those two M's, and then you know that the magneto is gonna be properly timed down through the pony motor so it fires the proper times. And that's the goal. Now, the downside is this mark is on the back side of the motor. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the front side of this too so that I can see it when it flips back up. I think. Would that even help? I don't know if that would help. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to help. I think I was going to mark this gear. I don't know. Anyway. So, other than, you know, a little bit of surface rust on some of these and on the gears here slightly, they're in amazing shape. I am going to kind of file the, the edges of these. I can kind of feel some burrs. And so, we're going to clean those up. Clean up the, the valleys a little bit with a file, but all in all, it's in great shape. All these surfaces that ride are in amazing shape. Literally, I mean, there is almost nothing wrong with this motor at all. Other than this bearing being, you know, slightly loose and having some, some end play and moving around a little bit, you know, I am extremely happy with the way this is. So, so this is the pony motor, all stripped down to about nothing. Start cleaning it up and getting it ready for the new parts. So, I am going to make these on one of my lathes. And that will be an upcoming video as well. Don't do that. Yeah. All right. Let's get to cleaning. <laughs>